Hey everyone, how's it going? This is the Stark Lord coming to you again, talking more about the Sisters of Battle again. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, HQ choices. Uh, just going to do a quick blurb. I'm still using the old codex as a cover because we don't have a real codex yet, obviously. So um, I'm going to try to do this really quick because I don't have a lot of time, and you probably don't want to hear in-depth stuff really on half this crap. Uh, so first we're going to start with the stuff that I don't have models for, which is why I have my computer up. So first we're going to start with our special character priest guys. Uh, these guys are ridiculous in the current codex. Um, both special character priest dudes come in about 90 points, have the exact same stat line, which is pretty solid. And up first we have the Arch Confessor, um, going to say his name wrong, Kirinov. Maybe that's right. Um, <clears throat> basically for you know 90 points you get a pretty solid... You know, fives in weapon skill, blitz skill threes, most of place, initiative four, leadership ten, crazy guy. With standard priest stuff, so, you know, Rosarius, but all the priests also have shield of face for some reason, so they both will have a four plus plus and a six plus plus save, which is kind of redundant, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> this guy comes with, you know, a lot of fun, silly things, like he's got this big, uh, it's called like the mace of whatever. Um, which is basically a thunder hammer with all the fun rules, so it's just a power weapon that makes anyone that survives it go to initiative one next turn. So that's a nice little combat trick in him. Um, other things he has that are really interesting is he counts as having a, a Laud Heller and a sim I'll never get this word right, uh, sim similar cur imperialis. A Laud Her Heller just means everyone with 12 inches can, uh, you know, re if they succeed a faith point, a faith roll. Uh, then roll a d6, if they get a 6, they uh, get the f faith point back, and the similar cur basically gets, lets you reroll faith rolls. So that's handy, so he helps out faith guys a lot. He also has this little icon, it's probably supposed to be that weird book skeleton thing. I don't really know what it's supposed to be, I haven't seen it in person, so I don't know, it's just, you know, a tablet with a skull on it, or a skeleton, and it looks cool. Um, and that just basically gives everyone within 6 inches them fearless. So basically... This guy rolls around giving you a nice fearless bubble, which is nice, and then you do a lot of, uh, enhances your faith, guarantees a lot of stuff. Uh, all the priests can take, uh, battle conclaves, which is basically, you know, a nice cheap counter assault unit. You have, uh, crusaders, assassins, and arcoflagellants, all are pretty decent at close combat in different ways. All of them cost exactly 15 points, so with a minimum of 3, you can take to a max of 10. Nice 150 points on top of this guy for a nice close combat, you know counter assault unit. Nothing in this co codex is really good at combat, but that isn't bad. Okay, our other special character we'll talk about really quick is uh, Uriah Jacobus. Jacobus, whatever. Jacobus, sorry. Um, this guy kind of feel really has to go in a conclave squad, and if he goes into one, you don't take um, Argoflagellants. A lot of people think Argoflagellants suck. They're probably right, but they especially just don't work with this guy. Mostly because, okay, again, same stats as the last dude, same points. His big thing is that he give, he's stubborn, and he gives the squad he's in plus one attack, and feel no pain. So if you have him with, you know, Arcoflagellants, it's redundant since they already have feel no pain. So you throw him with some Assassins and some Crusaders, or a nice, annoying beat stick group with lots of and lots of attacks. He also has a little unique shotgun, which, you know, is alright. Um, does he have anything else special? Not really. Oh, he has one other important special thing. His big thing that people take him for is you get to reroll your faith die at the beginning of the turn. So that helps a lot since you only get one roll of 1d6 and you can get really messed up by that. So you can at least get a chance of not getting too screwed. Okay, so now we're going to move away from our little computer screen crap. Go on to my actual models. So next, we're going to look at our Canon S. Canon S is better and worse than she used to be. Just like pretty much everything in the book. Sorry for the weird page turning into shaky. I still don't have a tripod. Um, I'm lazy and not, you know, good at doing things in a reasonable amount of time. Sorry. And my car broke, so I can't go get one now anyways. Um, <clears throat> so let's say, um, you know, basic threes all around. Decent ballistic skill, if I recall. And I lost her page. Hold on a second. Oh, that's why I lost her page. It's at the beginning. Uh, this is what happens when you're not prepared. Bad, dark, not prepared for things. Okay, so, yeah, you know, fives in the weapon and ballistic skill, threes for most of the other stuff, decent initiative. Um, her problem is she's kind of expensive with all of her stuff, and she doesn't help too much. She gives, you know, the squad she's with, uh, plus one initiative and feel no, uh, 
uh, not female pain. Uh, plus one initiative and preferred enemy if she succeeds her faith roll, um, which is good. Um, until they fack it, you can stack faith as far as I know. So if you wanted to, if you had a lot of faith points, you could keep it rolling. If you had six faith points to succeed all that, you could pop her up to initiative 10 technically. Um, that will never happen, but it's an option. Um, the thing that she can do, so she's okay. She's kind of expensive. Uh, you can't run her as she is now. Um, the way I've represented is my first Caness. She has a little conversion wing jump pack, which she can't take anymore, which stinks. Never with a, you know, a power sword and a plasma pistol. Honestly, you're probably better off giving her some kind of just combi bolter, frankly, and just relying on shooting with this army instead of silly combat stuff. Um, what she can do, though, is unique to her, at least, is she can take a little, uh... So I Command Squad, which comes with three Celestians, a Kyurgian, which I'm almost positive is how you say that now after talking to a couple of medievalists, and a, what is it called, Sister Dialogus, which I don't have a model for right now, so I'm just having a stand-in of one of my many banner bearers. Um, it's a fun little squad, feel no pain, five, five girls, uh, three of which are Celestians, so they can carry a lot of different equipment. Uh, their faith point, give it their faith... Power gives them relentless and move through cover, so I kind of feel giving them heavy weapons is a good idea. Though you can give them chain swords and pistols to get more attacks in, but they already have two base. So I just do them with heavy bolters, so you can walk around, say with a cannon nest, which I've been running, which has been a cannon with a combi melter or a combi flamer. With three heavy bolters walking around this field, just doing fire support. Works okay, should be in a rhino. Honestly, it's expensive, you don't really need to do it. Uh, it's probably not your best choice. Uh, your next best choice, I mean, obviously one of the two special character priests is a good choice, unfortunately. That's a quick point I'm kind of annoyed about with this. It's a Sisters of Battle, so you, it's the whole army about, you know, these fighting warrior, you know, nuns of the Imperium, and 60% of their HQs are guys, and they're the only guys in the Codex. There's no, like, militant fr fraternist militia or anything like that, it's just these commander dudes, and they're way better than half the sisters, and it's kind of annoying. Um, I'm sure they didn't do it on purpose except to sell more models, but it's like, what the hell, guys. Anyways, back to this stuff. Uh, St. Celestine, which I've shown before on my first and only previous video. Um, she is a house. At 105 points, you get a fantastic special character. Um, with your HQs, you either want, you know, some of that really good utility, a good support, or straight beat stick. Straight beat stick's like your lowest rank on things, usually. Because, you know, a beat stick just dies easily because everyone targets it. But the good thing about St. Celestine as a beat stick is that she keeps getting back up. <clears throat> when she dies, every turn afterwards you roll die. On a 4-up she comes back with D3 wounds and ready to do anything. So she can get back up and assault right away. Uh, her sword always hits on 4s unless it would hit on something better. So she's great at beating down on monstrous, uh, monstrous creatures and high toughness enemies. Not great with dealing with vehicles, but that's okay. And she counts as technically also having a heavy flamer. So... Really pretty sick model. Big fan. Uh, probably a must take if you're not going to take any uh, an HQ. I would call her the must take. Uh, her and then maybe uh, Jacobus because he's just helps with your faith so much and can take a nice counter attack unit. Both are really good. She can't take anyone to support her though. You can obviously throw in with some Seraphim because they can keep up with her. Overall, pretty awesome. And then your last choice is the standard priest. Um, this is obviously a Warhammer Fantasy model. I did a quick conversion on a long time ago to be a priest in the army, and then they kind of changed some rules around, but keeping them anyways. Um, again, an okay choice. They're basically like chaplains in that they let the unit they're in re-roll when they assault into attack, and then they're, when they charge in on an assault. Um, <clears throat> other than that, they're just cheap. Um, not too many great options. They're not terrible. Their big thing, again, is that you want to take one of these guys, you take them as a counter-assault unit, and you throw them in a big old squad of, you know, a conclave, because they can take that also. So you got your priest, or specifically it's Ecclesiarchal Confessor, 75 points-ish. Take some stuff for him, not too great, you know. But then you throw him in with some Crusaders, which I only have one Crusader actually painted here. Um, and Assassins and Arcos. Uh, with Assassins, Arcos, and Arcoflagellants, that is. And Crusaders, I feel they're all pretty decent. They're all exactly the same point cost as mentioned before. Um, Arcoflagellants are your high strength hitters with strength 5 with the feel no pain. So they don't have a normal save, but feel no pain helps a little bit. 
and they have a lot of attacks, so they're good at just, you know, high strength hitting, if you wanted to go with that, kind of like Dragon Scorpions for Eldar. They have the Assassins, which everyone loves, I mean, Initiative 6, um, crap ton of power weapon attacks at strength, I think, 4. And then you have my personal favorite, which is the, uh, uh, Crusaders, because they all have the lovely, you know, Storm Shield. So they only have a couple, of, they only have, like, one attack each with a power weapon, but they all come with a 3-plus invuln save which makes them much more resilient than all your other options, which is why I'm a big fan. Um, overall, again, I don't really like using the Priest. If you're going to use one, you're probably better off taking one of the special characters, unfortunately. Um, or using them as elites, which unfortunately can't take the lovely little battle conclaves, and then you just kind of throw them around wherever you can. Like, I guess you can throw one in with some uh, Repentia if you take them, or something like that. Um... If I had to rate the HQs, you know, best to worst out of this codex, it's obviously Celestine, then Jacobus, then the Arch Confessor, Kirinov, then the Canoness, and then the Priest. Because the Canoness, though she only helps one squad, I think her ability helps out better, and it can combo with things really well. Like if you throw her with Celestians, not the battle, the command squad, like the actual Celestians elite, their thing is plus one strength. So if you combo them together, you can get plus one strength and plus one initiative with Preferred Enemy and Fearless. So that can be a pretty mean hit to the face with a counter assault. But that's a lot of points, and you really gotta hope for a good faith roll on that point, so you probably are gonna have to take her with Jacobus just to guarantee you get a better roll. And then, okay, as always, Celestine is my favorite and the best. Hopefully when we get the real Codex, this little girl will be better again, and I can uh, use a jump pack again, because I love jump packs, or half the reason I like 40k is I think anyone jumping around through the sky, smashing things in the face is awesome. And, um, <clears throat> I kind of missed not being able to use one on her. But that's all there is. So, um, I hope you enjoyed. Tell me what you think about, you know, what HQs you think are better out of the Codex, or what you think is terrible. Tell me if you just hate this Codex. Uh, tell me whatever you want. Uh, thanks for listening, and, uh, catch you next time.